Hi, I'm Creston, and in this tutorial we're going to cover PostgreSQL replication monitoring. This tutorial assumes you already have streaming replication using replication slots set up. If not, you can watch the tutorials in the links below. First, we're going to go over a few slides that cover some concepts, and then we're going to jump in the, to the command line to show you how it's done. All right, let's get started with PostgreSQL replication monitoring. So when you're doing replication, you're going to want to find a way to monitor it for failures and also in the case where a replica may be falling behind from a primary database. So different types of issues can happen at multiple points. So maybe your primary has a problem with sending out all of the changes to the replicas that you have connected to it. Or maybe a replica is having trouble keeping up with the load that's being sent in and it's falling behind. Or maybe you're having network issues or any other kind of issues that could cause the process to fail and basically your replication stops. You want to keep track of these issues. So we're going to look at a number of different queries and even build one that helps you keep track of your replication monitoring. Uh, so probably the one used the most is pgstat replication and this you do on the uh, main or your primary database cluster. Uh, the next one also available on the your primary database is um, determining what its current wall file location is. Now on the replica you have a number of different functions you can use. You can check and see if it's in recovery. You can check the last wall file that it received um, via the network connection. And then what was the last one that was replayed? And then finally, um, what was the timestamp of the last one uh, that was replayed? So we're going to go over how to set this up in some live examples. All right, we're going to be using PostgreSQL version 10, and it is installed on Ubuntu on a single machine. I have a primary database cluster called main on port 5432 and a replica DB cluster called replica on port 5433. Now, the commands are slightly different between versions 9 and 10 of PostgreSQL. So version 10 and higher of PostgreSQL, they use wall underscore LSN for some of the commands. However, in version 9 or versions below 10, they use xlog underscore location. So if I ever have a command that has wall underscore LSN, just replace it with xlog underscore location and it should work. All right, the first thing we want to take a look at is pgstat replication, that system view, and we're going to look at it on the main or the primary database cluster. So if we run this, uh, it'll be very long like that. I'm actually going to switch to an extended, uh, excuse me, expanded display by backslash x, and we'll look at it again. Okay, so this gives you information with regard to the PID that's doing the replication, the username, the application name, which is a wall receiver, when this backend was started, and its state. So the Postgres documentation uh, indicates the different states, and I'll include that in the uh, show notes uh, for this episode. Uh, but basically, streaming is kind of what you want to see when you're doing streaming replication, of course. It shows you the um, sent LSN or location so this is what has been sent from the primary to the replica. So the primary has sent this off. And we are looking at this system view on the primary database right now. The right LSN is the location that has been written on the replica, but not necessarily flushed to disk yet. That's what flush LSN means, is that it's definitely been written to the disk. Replay LSN means that it has written those changes to the actual database. So it wasn't just flushed to disk the fact that it occurred, but it actually was written to the database. Now, write, flush, and replay is a lot of, the lag here is a lot of what we're interested in. But what I've noticed is that if your database is not active, like I'm actively doing streaming replication, but you'll see this is blank, indicating that there's uh, no lag going on. Um, so that is something to take away be aware of when it actually has database activity, you will see an interval being shown here. 
and this is perhaps by design, but this is one way that you can look at some lag other than the some of the other queries I'm going to be showing you. And then lastly, we are doing asynchronous replication. It's not synchronous replication. And I should say these lags, they indicate it's useful for synchronous replication, but I believe you could also potentially use it for tracking asynchronous replication as well. And of course, you will have a row in pgstat replication for each replica that you have. Since I just have one replica, it just shows this one record. Now, because I am using a replication slot, let's take a look at what the replication slots look like. And we see I have a, a slot name called replica I'm using, doing physical replication, and it is active true. Okay. Now, on the replica or the standby, you can another command that you may find useful is determining is it in recovery mode. So if I go here, this is our replica cluster. If I is it in recovery, it will say true. Otherwise, it's it's going to say false. But that's another command that you may find useful. Now let's go ahead and stop the replica and see what happens. Okay, that's stopped. And if we go back and look at pgstat replication, it will be empty. There will be no rows. So that's the first thing you need to check for is, is there a row or, or monitor, is there a row in pgstat replication for each of your replicas? If not, you have a problem. Something's happened. Uh, another thing we can check is the replication slots, and you'll see that instead of being active, it will be false. So that's another indication that not all of your replicas are uh, active. So let's go ahead and start this back up. And then if we look at the replication slots, we see it's true in the active PID. And if we look at the stat replication, we see it is streaming. Okay. Now for some of these queries I'm going to show you below, we're going to be using a way to do diffs between different LSNs. Um, so for example, you can give it to LSNs and it gives you the difference between them. So I'm just going to run this on the primary. And you can see this is a difference in bytes between these two LSNs. And I picked these at uh, random uh, to just show you a, a value that was different <laughs> than zero. So basically we can use this uh, to track uh, different lags similar to what you would see in uh, the write, flush, and replay lag. But again, these are only available in version 10. Um, so you could potentially use these in PostgreSQL 10, but if you're using 9, you can use, um, again, you need to change it to xlog underscore location underscore diff wherever you see wall S LSM, but you can use these queries for in version 10 as well. So this is a query to run on your primary database to track the lag, different lag in bytes. So I'm including, this is looking at pgstat replication, we're looking at the PID, the application name, as well as using this diff function to determine sending lag. So this is the difference between uh, the current, current wall location that's being written on the primary database with what has been sent to the replica. So a sending lag could indicate heavy load on the primary database. It's not able to send out the wall changes as fast as it should. Uh, the next is receiving lag. So this is the difference between what's been sent and what's been flushed to disk on the replica. Uh, so this in could indicate network issues or even the replica is under heavy load. There's some delay between it being sent and getting flushed to the disk on the replica. The next is replaying lag. So this is the difference between it was flushed to disk, but it hasn't been replayed in the database. So this in could indicate the replica is under some heavy load. It's not able to push changes into the database fast enough. So these are different areas you can look to, uh, looking at where lag might be, as well as what's the total lag. So let's go ahead and run this query to kind of see what we look get. So you run this again on the primary, and we can see 
we have no sending lag, receiving lag, replaying lag, so we have no lag for this. Now, I did do have a little bash script I developed that pushes inserts into the database, but it's not fast enough uh, to show lag. But, so when we look at this, it's still not fast enough to detect lag between here. However, if we look at pgstat replication, we can see what used to be nulls are now giving you an interval that shows how much lag between um, kind of where it is and what's been written, what's been flushed to the replica disk and what's been replayed on the replica. And this is actively refreshing as you can see here. The locations are changing, but they're pretty much always in sync and there's very, very little lag. So you may prefer to use uh, this, this lag and account for nulls um, because again, it, it will eventually go to nulls. So you may want to use this as opposed to the script, but the script is, is another one that, that you can use it also in version nine, if you're interested. Okay. Now on the replica, you have some different functions you can use to get, uh, what was the last wall received? What was the last wall replayed? And again, this is similar to, um, what's in pgstat replication in terms of replay LSN and I believe flush LSN. And we can check to see if the LSNs are equal and do return zero. If not, look at a timestamp difference using this. So again, this is something you would run on the replica. And we're still actively running inserts. And if I run this, uh, we did stop the database, so I have to reestablish my connection. Okay, so if I run this, we see the log delay is zero. And again, we're not pushing in enough data for it to detect uh, changes here. Because again, the changes, as we saw here, are very, I'd have to be super fast to catch a difference. And the last uh, thing you may be interested in is what if you want to know what exact file a particular LSN refers to? Well, you can use this command um, pg wall file name, and I'm just going to give it what the current LSN is. And you can run this on the primary, and it will actually give you the file name and the wall files that it's referring to. So the multiple locations are all in that one file. So these are some examples you can use on how to monitor your replication. I would say the most important points are that you have a row in pgstat replication for each of your replicas. If you don't, it indicates a problem, as well as you have active replication slots, assuming you're using replication slots. Um, and then the second thing is to check for different types of lag, either using these columns in pgstat replication if you're on version 10 or higher, uh, or using some of the queries that, that I showed you can use and even to track some time differences on the replica if you want. I hope this has been helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to visit the links in the description below. If you want to receive additional content and tutorials, please visit scalingpostgres.com and sign up. Thanks.